Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be giving some plain glass jars a glamorous makeover already for the new year. Along the way, I'll be making some extra items using leftover resin and, as usual, the unexpected things usually turn out the best. <laughs> So stay tuned for a nice, simple resin project that anybody could do. First of all, I took my large glass coffee jar and filled it full of foam. It's a pool noodle. <laughs> I think that's what they call them, isn't it? Pool noodles. It's like a flotation device. And I chopped it all up and packed it in and then put it onto my cup turner. It didn't work perfectly and I will show you later on the way I adapted that for the second um, coat. So I cleaned the glass with some isopropyl alcohol and I'm just drying it off to make sure it's all completely clean and dry. Next, to make sure that I didn't get resin everywhere, I put a chopping board mould underneath to catch all the drips. And I actually ended up using all the drips in that mould to make something else to go with the coffee pot. So it turned out really well that I used up all that excess resin and I didn't waste it. So the resin I'm using on this first layer is Resin Pro's Transparent Resin and it's quite a thin one. Um, I used a thicker resin for the second coat because I found that this, you know, the, the colour dispersed a bit too much because it was such a thin resin. So I would recommend using a thicker one. I, you find these things out through trial and error, don't you? And so, yeah, by the time I got onto my second coat, I went for a thicker resin. And the colour in it is um, brown mica powder. It's chocolate brown mica powder, actually, from Arteza. And I'm just rubbing it on with my hand. And it's as simple as that, really. You don't really need to um, faff around with it too much because it finds its own level as you leave it and it keeps on turning. It all levels out so don't worry about having lumps and bumps in there. It will be fine. I've also used my heat gun, you might have just noticed, to pop the bubbles. Once most of the excess resin had dripped off, I took the um, tray mould away, or chopping board mould, whatever you want to call it, and just put some silicon underneath to catch anything that was left. And then I just tidied it all up so that that brown resin was just around the outside of the chopping board mould. And then I cleaned up the inside, ready for the next step on that. Right, back to the jar. I've taken some very fine brown glitter and I'm just sprinkling it all over the bottom of the jar just to add a little bit of sparkle. It turned out in the end, uh, when you see the finished piece, you'll see that it's not really essential because most of it got covered up. But yeah, you don't know these things until you're finished, do you? <laughs> Right, the next day it was all cured and it was time for the second layer and I decided I'd quite like to do some sea foam on there. I've got some Wave Pro powder and I've still been wanting to experiment with it to get my wave effects just right but I kind of knew that on a cup turner it was going to be a different story but still I do like to experiment so let's see what happened. So I'm get, I've got my powder and I'm going to put it in the cup and I'm doing it differently. I've learned through experience now with this that it can be lumpy. If you add this powder to the resin, to a lot of resin and try mixing it up, you'll get lumps in it and you really don't want lumps in. So what I do now is I put it into the bottom of an empty jar or pot or whatever your container is 
and then add the tiniest bit of resin and make a paste and just keep squashing it all against the sides to squash any little lumps of powder and then add a tiny bit more and just keep on adding the tiniest bit of resin until you've got a really smooth paste and your finished paste needs to be a really bright crisp white doesn't want to be um transparent at all completely opaque is what you're going for and the resin i'm using this time and which i should have probably used the first time as well is art pro deluxe it's another resin pro resin and it's very very thick and it's the best thing i've found to use when you're trying to make waves because of its thickness you don't lose everything it doesn't all drip away it's so thick it you know the patterns that you make stay much better so yeah i love that for the for this effect it's just perfect Right, so once everything was mixed, it was time to add the clear resin to my jar. And as you can see here, that brown that I put on the day before really didn't stay too too well. But it, it turns out that it didn't matter because it's going to be filled with coffee anyway. It just gives it that shimmer that you get from the mica powder and that's still there. So it wasn't really a problem. So yeah, I'm adding my Art Pro Deluxe onto the jar and I'm going to leave everything once it's on I'm going to leave it all for half an hour to really thicken up before I add any of the white and I don't know if you can see here but this time I've packed the inside of the jar differently I've used the pool noodles again but I've laid them in horizontally instead of vertically and I've put a hole down the middle of each piece so that it stays completely centered because the first time I just packed it round the edges and it was just wobbling around too much. But by making the hole in the middle of each piece, it keeps it central. So as before, I collected all the drips and I'm just tidying it up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, but yeah, I just made sure it wasn't just one puddle in the middle. Right then, so everything's thickened up because I left it for half an hour and now I'm just going to pour on my white in lines on the jar and blow it with my high powered um, decorator's heat gun. You need something with, you know, a lot of power to blow this resin because it's so heavy and thick and a normal embossing type heat gun won't work. So yeah, I use my decorator's heat gun for this. So I'm just done a strip around the... Um, all around the circumference and I'm just going to blow it. And I'm going to fast forward this because there was a lot of trial and error getting it so that it was in a way that I liked it and if you'd be sat here all day <laughs> if I left it in real time. So yeah, I'm going to speed it up because it took me a while to get it just as I wanted it. I found that after I'd blown it quite a lot with that big heat gun that it thins out the resin quite a lot and so if you don't want it to blow too hard after that you can use a um, like an embossing heat gun with less um, power behind it and it doesn't blow it quite as hard. I also used my torch now and again to pop bubbles and it does help to get li little bits of lacing if you use like a little torch or a lighter you know um yeah it didn't turn out the way i thought it was going to turn out it looks more like a really stormy ocean a stormy ocean of coffee <laughs> rather than um, lacing of you know the edge of a wave but i really like it and i liked that effect so much that i did do another one in blues to make it look a bit more like an ocean to get that stormy ocean effect again. So yeah, I just kept going in the same way and I did the same thing on the chopping board underneath just so that, you know, that I got a little bit of lacing on that too. I had no idea how that would turn out. <laughs> that was going to be a complete mystery, but you will see soon just what did happen. Right, 
Right then, it's the next day and it's all ready for its label and its final clear coat of resin. I've cut the coffee label on my Cricut machine, my cutting machine, and it's like a gold, goldy green vinyl. And I've just cut it out and got on some um, transfer film ready to place onto the jar and I did faff around a little bit because I was scared to death of getting it wonky because once it's on it's on <laughs> and if it's wonky you're stuck with it wonky but I think I got it right in the end <laughs> Once it was in position, I smoothed it down with my smoothing tool before taking off the transfer tape. And then it was ready for its clear coat of resin. And again, I used the Art Pro Deluxe because I find that works really well for this technique. Next, I just finished off the back of the tray by filling it with some um, transparent resin, the Resin Pro Transparent, with some of the chocolate brown mica powder again that was from Arteza so that was just simply filled up and that was ready the really cool thing about the Daweg Burt's coffee jars is that those lids are hollow and so all you have to do is take like a little flat screwdriver or something and just take off that rubber bit temporarily and you can fill it with whatever you want to fill it with. You could use um, some fairy lights in there or resin or anything you like. But I'm using coffee beans and I actually think that it looked really good with the coffee beans in. Right, when I demoulded the board, it was all right. It looked OK. It was interesting, but it was a... It was a bit boring. It needed something else, in my opinion. I wanted to put my coffee jar on there, but there was just space in the corner with the coffee jar on to add some coffee beans and some resin. So I did a final layer because I just don't like to give up on these things. I did a final layer and this time I added coffee beans just to the corner of the board and I think it just added texture and interest. And in the end, I think it did look good. I had a little bit of the resin left. I used the Resin Pro Transparent Resin for this. Um, so I added some more coffee beans and a little bit of gold leaf and just made a little pot. Um, as I'm narrating this, I still haven't demolded this. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but we will see. <laughs> I'll leave links in the description of this video to everything I used, but most of the things are from Resin Pro, including the board mould. That's from Resin Pro too. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, and there's a discount code as well. So don't forget to check out the discount code in the description if you're going to go to Resin Pro. And before I show you all the finished pieces, because I'd mentioned the blue one before, well, it's blue and purple really, or blue and pinky purple. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you how that one looked. Um, well, this morning, I've only just done it this morning, so it hasn't got a label on or anything. It's uh, still turning and curing as I speak now. But I just wanted to show you how it looked because I'd mentioned it before. And I actually managed to get a little bit of lacing on this one. I love this one, actually. It's my, <laughs> my favourite of the two. And this one was just an afterthought. For this one, I actually painted the jar because I'd, I'd done one. My first one went completely wrong. So I had some resin on it and it wasn't good. So I painted over it with the blues and the purples and then did what you've just seen me do and yeah I think it turned out really nice and I think this one's going to be a sugar jar okay it's the next day and everything's finished and so I can show you all the completed projects here's the coffee jar and with the coffee inside you can see there's a lot more contrast between the background and the waves so it looks better now and I love the lid with the coffee beans in I think that's the best part of it, to be honest, and that was the easiest part. So, yeah, that was a good idea to do that, I think, even if I say so myself. <laughs> and with the sugar jar, I put sugar in the lid and that also looked really good. And you'll see that next. 
the waves on the sugar jar actually turned out differently to the coffee jar. And, you know, I think it looks a little bit more like a snow scene. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> more like snow than waves. But yeah, I like that too. And the little spoon pot which I made turned out quite cute as well with the coffee beans in. And as you can see, they all floated to the top of the mould. So at the bottom, it was just clear with a little bit of gold in and then the coffee beans at the bottom. Well, you know what I mean. It turns upside down. So the coffee beans were at the bottom. And yeah, some pictures of the finished results. And I'm quite happy with the finished product. And you can see the tray has that beautiful texture from the coffee beans and that works out really well too so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed it it was just a fun little video for my first one of the year and speaking of the new year i hope yours is going to be much better than the last one and it, i hope it brings you everything you wish for stay safe and i will see you next time bye for now